So those of you who were silent and not talking while I was silent, how did it feel? Feels? Okay. And those who were not silent <laughs> while I was silent, how did that feel? No, I'm like genuinely interested in the answer. How did it feel? They were anxious that what you will talk. Yeah. And the people who were silent were not anxious? I think being silent was a little uncomfortable. Yeah. It was comfortable. I was actually You you felt that? Because you expected me to talk? There was a sarcastic smile on your face, and I was thinking you were waiting for them to stop talking. <laughs> then, then talk. So all of you who felt uncomfortable because you were expecting me to talk, how, how does that feel in your body? Could you feel something? Like if you were to take your attention to your senses, could you feel, could you describe how it felt? Uh, Frustrating, yes, and curiosity, and energy is trapped inside, and something has to need to be broken by something Right, anxious. How does anxiety feel? How does it feel in your body to be anxious? Impatient. To be. How? Anxiety is a positive sign unless and until it goes into the hopelessness that you will have to go away and How interesting. How interesting. How interesting. Everybody is anxious and anxiety and anxious, they both are the positive signs. Don't let them happen into the, you know, hopelessness. So when you say Anxious, right? Because you're anticipating something? Because you were expecting something? And if I just sat here for 20 minutes and didn't speak? <laughs> but that's a possibility, right? Because it's my talk, so I can choose to sit in silence for 20 minutes. Then people will leave, start leaving the place. And why would you do that? Because you're not speaking. Because we cannot do it. Because you expect me to be a certain way. Yeah. And if I don't meet your expectations, then you will reject me and walk out. Yes. Right? Yes? But, but, but just, just stay with this for, for a while. I think this is really important that this came up so quickly you know, in this talk, that just because you expect me to be a certain way and you would not find me corresponding to that expectation, you will reject me and walk out as opposed to staying with me for 20 minutes and experiencing what that feels like. not promote that I would have to speak. Did I say that anywhere? But you were sitting in the head chair, you know? But I did not promote anywhere. We knew that you are the host. That is why we were expecting you to talk. So let's just think about this for a while. You know, what we're saying here. That if you expected me to be a certain way, and you perceived me to be a certain way, and I did not conform to your expectations, you would not be open to experiencing me another way. 
Do you see that? Do you see that? And so if you go through life like this, because it's a mindset, right? It's in your mind. We have promoted that I'm going to be here and you're going to hear me talk. And if I'm going to be sitting here in silence, it makes you uncomfortable to the extent that you reject life and you walk out. So if you are going to be living your life like this, what kind of a life is this for you? So every time something or somebody does not meet your expectation, you're going to reject that experience and walk out. So, so I'm just going to like continue, and we'll address this right at the end. Um, but, but does that come through what I'm saying? And can you just stay with that point for a second? And because because of the response, we'll also talk about listening. So, for the next 20 minutes, you're going to listen to what I have to say, finally, because I'm speaking, and I have come up to your expectations, <laughs> and you have not rejected me, although I could choose to be silent, and, and then you would walk out, which is so sad, because you might have gained something from that silence. But now that I'm conforming to your expectation, I'm just going to take you through two, three types of listening. So the first is when you listen through your intellect, which is what you were doing right now. Because your mind told you that you're going to be here for a certain purpose, and you had a story attached to that purpose. That's how the story is going to play out. And if the story doesn't play out that way, then you're rejecting it. Your intellect is telling you to reject it. The second type of listening is emotional, like you listen to music. And you just listen to music. It's an experience, but you don't stay with it. You don't always remember the lyrics. You don't always remember the melody. It's just something that's a part of the experience, and then you let it go. Right? It's not something you ponder over necessarily. You listen to sounds. You, you listen to traffic noise. Sometimes it, you pay attention to it. Sometimes you don't pay attention to it, but it's there. And then the third type of listening is reflective, which is what I want you to do, which is what I expect you to do if you want me to be here and not reject you and work out. Then I would want you to be in a reflective state, that whenever I say something, you don't necessarily have to question it immediately. You don't have to accept it immediately. You don't have to reject it immediately. You don't have to let it go. You should just have that pause where you're absorbing what I'm saying and processing it and see what questions come up inside you because of whatever is being said and how it challenges your intellectual listening. Does that make sense? Yes? Because every time something new is communicated, the first tendency is, oh, but I wasn't expecting this, so I'm going to walk out. But growth comes when you learn to stay, correct? Can you hear me at the back, you right at the back? You right at the back. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? No. There's somebody behind you. Yeah? And every time you can't hear me, you raise your hand. So I'll speak loudly, because there isn't a mic. So if I forget to project enough, you raise your hand, and I'll speak loudly. Good? 
So coming back to anxiety. Okay, thank you. Um, what makes us anxious? Expectations, right? So three o'clock, you'll get done from here. You'll go spend a day in a certain way. What if your day doesn't turn out to be that way? There's a kid crying in the background. I didn't expect that. <laughs> so if, if that starts disturbing me, then how is my day going to turn out? So I'm standing here, I'm giving you a talk, and all my attention is on that kid who has stopped crying now. <laughs> but I cannot let go of that kid crying. Because how dare he? <laughs> you know, I expected him not to. How dare he? It's another part of anxiety. You see, right? So every time, every time somebody does something, that you didn't expect them to do or you didn't want them to do, you're disturbed. You're disturbed. And that's the kind of energy you carry with you. Does that make sense? So the mind, you know, when we said we expected it and we created a story in our mind. So the mind has a tendency, right? For a lot of you, when I was sitting here in silence, and that, that there was a purpose to it. How many of you were here? How many of you were actually here in that moment? But, but how many of you were thinking about just what happened five minutes ago, five days ago, five hours ago, right? Or what's going to happen when I speak, when I finally speak? Why isn't she speaking, you know, like this? So this angst, either your mind is in the past, which is about regret or disappointment, sometimes happiness. But if your mind is still in the past, it's very unlikely that it's about a happy memory. It stays for a shorter time. Longer time, people who stay in the past, they're depressed because it's about regret. It's about what you should have or could have done differently. Anxiety is worry about the future. Why isn't she speaking? What am I going to do for the next 20 minutes? What will happen if I don't graduate? Is that a question or you can't hear me? Questions I'll take right at the end. Questions I'll take right at the end. So. <coughs> If we just learn to experience life, if we just learn to control our mind, where we can be here with whatever the reality of the situation is, that is where we become truly empowered and life starts happening, as opposed to concepts. Because everything else is a concept. How life should be is a concept. It's not life. Isn't that so? Isn't that so? Right? Life is what's happening right now. I'm standing here the way I want to stand here. Somebody's mobile is ring ringing. Somebody's kid is crying. You know, who knows? There might be an earthquake. We don't know. We don't know. You can't control things in life. You can just be with them. And when you're with them, then you start influencing life. Then life starts happening for you and with you. Correct? Yes? So normally, we, when we talk about control, we think in terms of events and then eventually time. Right? You want to control time. Ki ye cheez abhi honi chahiye. Aise. Mere time pe, mere paas 24 ghante hain din ke. I need things done the way I want right now. Correct? Some people who become empowered still manage time. But what is more difficult to manage is energy. Like time is a dimension, energy is a 
multiple dimension reality. So when we look at life, we look at life in, in very gross matter form, right? Like you're your body and you're so attached to your body that it becomes your identity. You're so attached to your concept that they become your identity. I am a teacher, that's my identity. Now that limits me because I can't be anything else. Anything else that life offers me, I will reject because I am so attached to who I am. Correct? But if I start letting go of those attachments, then that's where my growth happens? Yes or no? Yes or no? So similarly, if I start seeing the world and myself as energy, then life changes? My perception of life changes? My experience of life changes? Yes? What impacts energy? So moving on to that, how do you, abhi to maine sari intellectual baat kar di na? Aise maine aapko conceptually, maine aur concepts bata di aapko. Nye concepts. Identify karne ke liye, ke ye kaha hai aur ye truth hai aur ab hum isse attach ho jate hai. But how, how, do you, how do you manage energy? What are the things that affect your energy? Thoughts. Thoughts. And? Mindset. And? Okay, environment. Environment. Who said environment? We'll come back to that. OK? We'll come back to that. Or? Company. Company. Practicality. Practicality. Self-reflection. Yeah. So we say there are four sources of energy. First is food. Jo aap khate hain, wo aapko affect karta hai. Whether you understand that or not, whether you agree with it or not, <laughs> but it does. That's a reality. Huh? That's what if, people are stressed now after having breakfast. No. <laughs> I love this. So generally, if you are to, and when I said energy has dimensions, in terms of meditation, if you are to go deeper into the layers, your diet is the first thing that will be an obstacle. If your diet is, is very meat-oriented or very heavy or very high in fats and fried foods and junk foods and carbonated drinks or any other types of toxins, it's very hard for you to go deeper into energetic layers. So agar aapko jo baat meinne kahi hai, if you really want to be on that journey, which is a beautiful journey, then the first source of energy that you'll control is food. Second is sleep. So if you haven't slept properly, you wouldn't be able to function properly. Harika sleep ka level alag hota hai, but there is a minimum six to eight hours. Some people can do four hours also, but then that's a very unique sort of a case. Um, third is breath, which is what we are going to be really looking at today. And fourth is a meditative, calm mind. So if you can control these four, if you're aware of these four, your life is aligned energetically. Saans ke baghair to zinda hi nahi reh sakte na? Madab, khane ke baghair thode din zinda reh lenge, neend ke baghair thode din zinda reh lenge. But if you stop breathing, your life ends. Your life ends right now, in this moment, with expectation. For the next 20 years, which you have made a plan for 20 years, if you stop breathing, then that plan has been finished. Right? Then you can keep rejecting the world. The world has rejected you. <laughs> so when you do that, your breath, but we're not really aware of how we breathe anymore. 
right? Because the kind of lifestyle we've adopted, the kind of habits we've adopted, the kind of ego attachments we have developed, we're not really aware of our breath. And breath is critical to your well-being. अगर आप सांस सही से नहीं लेते तो आपके जो 90% टॉक्सिन्स आपकी सांस से बाहर जाने हैं वो आपकी बॉडी के अंदर हैं एंड यू लिविंग अ वेरी अनहेल्दी एंड डिस एम्पावर्ड लाइफ योर प्रोडक्टिविटी लेवल इज लो योर योर इनएफिशिएंट योर रिलेशनशिप्स आर डिस्टर्ब्ड बिकॉज वो बच्चा क्यों रो रहा था अब ये तो मेरी जिंदगी का मसला बन गया ना <laughs> तो अब ये तो कल तक मेरे दिमाग में रहेगा कि उसने ये बात कैसे कर दी so everybody are meeting how dare how dare people talk to me like this so then how dare you talk to me like this you see this right you're so disturbed and that's the kind of energy you are bringing into the world and that is the way the world is responding to you that is the way life is responding to you and then you will be anxious because you're out of control because your life is out of control just because of one case just because you've given you've given so much importance right agar main itni attach ho jaau is baat se ki kaise kisi ne kuch kar diya jo ki mujhe nahi acha laga to wo to one kid to aise roz 20 mil jayenge na har cheez hi aapki expectation ke against ja rahi hai the world has to live up to your standards like you know we we are we been taught such bolna chahiye mehnat karni chahiye subah time pe uthna chahiye acha rehna but hum wo nahi karte because wo concepts hai we don't know how to incorporate that into our experience you can only control your mind through your breath when you start focusing on your breath you start living consciously then your mind settles and that is what yoga and meditation does so yoga ka perception logon ka bahut hi limited hai unfortunately in our society which is very physical you know you would say oh i'm going to lose weight and look good which makes you more anxious because you're not losing weight and you're not looking good immediately you know and you're eating all the wrong foods but you just want to look good to meri to yoga se ye expectation thi ke main to ek mahine mein dubli ho jaungi lekin main to hui nahi so now how dare yoga do that to me you know matlab ye ek ajeeb conversation hai so yoga is more about what i said that you're with whatever is you're doing your 100% you're in the present moment and even with your 100% you let go of attachment to the result you know it's like we say in sanskrit we say yoga uh, chitta vritti nirodha so yoga is the tool for handling the modulations of the mind you know the mind that keeps telling you this is how life should be so yoga is becoming one with life mind body and soul yes yes now some of it might sound very like supernatural and unscientific and what is she talking about so for that i would just say you stay with the experience just staying with the experience takes you somewhere Did you have a question? You had a question. Yes. I was just listening when you were telling us about this uh, when we are silent for 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 a period of time. We are either looking back at uh, to the to our past uh, or we are looking uh, thinking about the future. So what uh, what if we are just reflecting on the things uh, we we have just done by like five minutes back, and we are we are thinking about those things that. well for now i mean right now i want it but even then that state is still in the past because the moment is here you see now it's gone now it's gone now it's gone do you, do you understand what i'm saying 
Like if I start thinking about what I said five minutes ago, I can't be giving this talk. Do, do you see what I'm saying? Like if I even, even if I memorized this talk and I was thinking about what I said five minutes ago, you would notice my presence in this sentence would reduce. My presence, energetic presence for you here would reduce. Do, do you see that? Do you see that? Because five minutes is also past. Five seconds is past. It's gone. It's gone. Now it's gone again. <laughs> so you know, if you live like that, if, if I have to stand here, we do this. Like you'd have to live like this. When I say now, 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 you'll go mad. You'll spend your life doing this. If you have to keep your mind like this, this is how your life is, literally, maybe even faster. Right? So we're going to do a few breathing exercises and a meditation where you might experience whatever you experience. I don't know what you'll experience. I want you to have no expectations <laughs> that my meditation will be this magic formula which will cure you of your anxiety. And then if it doesn't, then what a terrible session this was. <laughs> because that is why we were here. And that didn't happen. So how ineffective. So <laughs> your meditation is what it will be for each one of you. It's an individual experience. It's also dependent on how open you are how receptive you are, and how much you let go. So when we meditate, we sit with just this intention that I am nothing, I do nothing, and I want nothing. So at the end of it, there is nothing. <laughs> okay. There is no expectation of me talking. You know, you have to let it go, right? And so that's the beauty. When you meditate, you are in a state of complete effortlessness. Where we say that you, you, you do nothing. You know, you're in an, another state. And then once you come out of the meditation, then you are in the world and in the action 100%. Your effort is 100%. But you're not attached. You see the difference? You're not attached to controlling life. You give to life. Because essentially, at a deeper level, you are here to give. I am giving this talk because you are here. And not the other way around. Do you see the difference? I would not be able to give this talk if you were not here. So you are giving to me rather than just me giving to you. And you rejecting me <laughs> if I don't give to you the way you want me to give to you. Do you see the difference? So if you approach life with just this awareness, that every time you do something, you give, then that expectation is gone anyways, isn't it? Because when I give, I don't give with the expectation of even a thank you. Otherwise, it's a transaction. It's not a gift. Does that make sense? Yeah? Good. So now we'll sit comfortably. I don't know how I'll sit comfortably. And we'll figure it out. And we'll start with alternate nostril breathing. I've done that before also. Um, and then we will move into this girl. She's having a terrible experience because her experience, and she's not making this effort to get up and come and sit here so she can meditate. There's a space here. You can sit here or here. Somebody will move this jacket for you. 
as opposed to you staring at the camera. And you would switch off your mobiles. So they will not ring for at least 20 minutes. If somebody's mobile is ringing while you're meditating, bless them <laughs> and pray for them that may God elevate them <laughs> in their spiritual state where they are aware of the discomfort of other beings. Do not be disturbed. Yeah? Good. Okay, so this is your left hand. Some of you have done this before. Chin mudra. Right? Like this? Yeah, like this. These are your two fingers. You put them here. And these are, you don't have to do it immediately, just see me do it. So these, your ring finger and your thumb. You control this to close your nostril. And your index fingers are here. During the meditation, Stay with the experience. I am giving you all these instructions so you don't start opening your eyes, start looking at other people, start <laughs> disturbing other people. If I'm not talking, start searching for a sound. No, just keep your attention within. Stay with yourself. Stay with the experience. Stay with the experience. Somebody who wants to share something? How did it feel? Yes. And? Yeah, it's, it's hard, right? Your body, there's a lot of discomfort that comes up. But the more you practice, the, the more you become still with sustained practice. So on your way home, when there are angry drivers honking, you let them pass because that is not your way. You're not going where they're going. You're going in a different direction. So thank you for your presence. I am grateful that you're here. Thank you, Nida, for always do Nida does this very silently. I love this about her. You know, she's a very, like a non-attention grabbing person, and she does these amazing things with a very low profile. And I always feel like we don't acknowledge her enough. So I, I just feel like, you know, we should all thank her and bless her. So thank you so much. <laughs> And we will move to the room inside. After the meditation, some people might be really sensitive. So it will be nice if someone will sing and we will just keep things, you know. Even during the day, those who did it for the first time, don't do too much. You know, just relax. <laughs>